Hi, thanks for joining us today on Uptime Logistics. I'm your host, Doug Draper with the Denver Transportation Club. And today we have a tremendous guest with us. We're gonna continue our theme and talk a little bit about um, the internet of things and uh, what we refer to as ag tech. Um, so we have some pretty cool things to talk about today. Before we jump into the topic, we always like to learn a little bit about our guest. And so we're excited to have John Stratton with us from Freewave Technologies, and he's on uh, the product line manager for some of the new technologies that are coming out. So, John, I want to thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to chatting with you. Yeah, awesome. Like I said, we'd like to learn a little bit, a little bit about our guests. So, um, tell us about yourself, kind of how you ended up in the seat that you are right now. Yeah. Not literally, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the basement, so you can guess. <laughs> um, so I uh, actually grew up on a small sweet corn and vegetable farm in uh, Pennsylvania, and you know we grew um, vegetables. Had a roadside stand. So uh, I've been into uh, farming for a while, and uh, still have some family and cousins running the farm. And uh, I got into ag tech from there, and you know for 10 or 11 years, I did uh, precision farming, uh, engineering, and also product management uh, for one of the ag equipment companies and worked on a lot of uh, in equipment uh, displays and telematics and mobile apps and uh, drone projects and various things. So really enjoy the, the ag tech uh, space in general. And I think there's a lot of cool things that uh, Freewave can do there as well. Yeah. Well, I'd say in, in the series that we've done on the ag tech, um, you know, you're driving down the highway, you just see a, a tractor and some dust, and uh, you don't really understand all the amazing things going into it. So I've learned a lot in, in this series as well. So I'm excited to, to hear about it. So before we, we jump into it, tell us a little bit about Freewave and what you guys do. Um, and I know that we talked about there's some foundational aspects that you guys like to use uh, within your business. So tell us about Freewave. Yeah, so Freewave has been around for over 20 years and has a really strong history of connectivity, radio products specifically, uh, 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz and some other frequencies. Uh, and we've got products that are in use in lots of industries around the world, uh, oil and gas, water and wastewater and ag. I've been here about a year and I'm responsible for uh, software development and expanding that foundational connectivity to be also uh, a software platform and working with my colleagues on uh, new radios and new hardware for it to run on. So in, instead of only providing connectivity, we also want to provide the edge computing and edge software capabilities that lead to more uptime lead to better data, better reliability of the equipment it's running on. Yeah. Great. Yeah, you used um, an interesting term um, just now, kind of at the edge, right? And I know we were talked uh, prior about at the edge and asset, you know, at the edge assets. Um, that's a pretty cool term, but um, tell us exactly kind of what that means. Yeah, it does seem to be becoming a bit of a buzzword, unfortunately, but it definitely means that instead of doing everything in the cloud, I think with a lot of ag tech on the market today, there's an assumption that there's a, a cloud part of that service to do data analysis and some of the big data type things. And what we want to provide with the edge computing capabilities is the ability to do that you know, on the device without a cloud connection because lots of uh, farm operations, utility operations, oil and gas operations are in places where there is no reliable internet connection. So we want to be able to do that sort of analysis you know, on, on the device closer to the tractor or well pad or utility site. Gotcha. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. So as far, you know, everybody talks about cool technology and, and assets out there, but really it kind of relates to, all right, how does that impact productivity? And how does that help with profits or from the general consumer? How's that going to help me? You know, does that mean my, my bread in the store is going to be cheaper? So maybe talk a little bit about how the edge asset and some of the um, 
uh, the, the technology you're bringing to the table to the farmers is helping with their productivity and profits. Yeah, so I think in, in terms of productivity and profits, one of the great things about the um, edge analytics capability and you know, software capabilities closer to the equipment is um, you know, it helps with retrieving data that you never had access to before, or it took a lot of work and people traveling to equipment to get the data that you need to run the business. So it really helps with shortening the decision cycle instead of having to wait to get data uh, until the end of the season, you can get it right in the middle and make better decisions for your business and make better decisions, you know, to imp improve profitability, you know, in the middle of the season. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty important. Right. You know, we, we have a number of examples where, you know, in the technology that might be installed out there today, you're only getting data you know, once a day, once, uh, once an hour, and you know, once a minute. So with the uh, software capabilities closer to that equipment, and you're now taking that down to a second or under a second, and you don't have to send it, you know, use all that data over a cell connection that's expensive or a radio connection that is limited in bandwidth. You can really uh, customize what you need and you know, make better decisions based on the important data that matters for your business. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the asset, g give us a, a visual, right? I'm a very visual person. So, you know, assets kind of a general, general term, like give us an example of what you're literally, you know, I'm envisioning you're putting, bolting something onto the tractor that's identifying how fast the wheels are turning or how the, the water content in the soil What's an example of, of, of an asset that would be used and what that does? Yeah, so uh, there's a couple examples. Uh, the, the tractor one is an obvious one. Uh, one example where FreeWave has uh, several uh, deployments out there with uh, several of the big names is pivot irrigation. If you've ever been flying over and seen all the green circles, those are from uh, center pivot irrigation on fields and so you know that you know at the center of that is a control station so you're looking at water flows temperatures pressures and you know we see that that could also expand to be not just for the irrigation excel itself but also provide connectivity for anything else in the field whether it's soil sensors or tractors or something else and and the measurements that in your example, the soil sensors, right? So it gives you a little bit of information. It gives you some data. Um, where is that sent and how fast can they, they, the farmer, react to it? So if it says, hey, right this very moment, the, the line that you're farming is not, doesn't have enough water content and the farmer knows that right there in the moment, what, what, how does that help him or what does that do? So, so one of the challenges with connectivity, I would say, is if you're doing all of that in the cloud and relying on an internet connection, uh, the sensor data has to get to the cloud before anything can happen with it. So one of the things that the edge capability brings on is the ability to analyze that data as it's coming in and look at, you know, either a single value or a pattern, you know, it's, you know, too high or too low. And, that lets the farmer immediately know that you know, their, uh, their soil moisture is not where they want it to be, and then they can make a decision about how to irrigate, or they can make a decision about you know, when to plant or not. And it really makes the decisions a lot more timely, which is pretty important and you know, leads to a better, better quality you know, down the uh, consumer food chain as well. Yeah, I got it. So what would be, um, so we talked about water and moisture monitoring. What would be one other example of an asset that you would bolt on or the, the farmer would be able to, to use um, to improve yield and things? Give us one more example. Yeah, I, th I think one more example, and you know, there's a lot of technology and focus on uh, equipment and field operations, but there's 
a lot of technology in the livestock and you know, dairy world as well. And uh, there's several companies out there that have had uh, robotic milking machines for a while that mm -hmm. makes it you know, easier to uh, not only do the milking operation, but uh, better for the, the cows involved. And then um, there's herd monitoring equipment that goes with that. Um, you know, around the uh, the neck of the cow, there's you know there's a lot of variations in how to monitor uh, individual individual animals and you know make sure that they're you know healthy and safe and doing okay. Uh, not that farmers didn't know that already and keep track of their um, their herd already, but it definitely makes it uh, a lot easier and a a lot. Um, a lot more immediate to know if there's a problem they need to look at. Gotcha. And so in, in the herd management that we just spoke about, is it using milking cows right out there? Is it literally every single cow, you have a herd of a hundred and every cow has a, a collar or something on their physical body that helps it do that. Talk about that asset piece of it. Yeah. So there, there's a, you know, a battery powered, um, you know, necklace type thing that, is on each individual uh, animal that's got uh, an ID system of some sort. There's you know several that use RFID, and so when the the cow is uh, going into the barn, you know there's an RFID scanner that takes some data, and some of those are evolving to also be GPS based and you know other types of connectivity, so you don't have to be only near the scanner to get the information. Uh, the the other example um, that many people may not know about is the importance of uh, feeding consistency in uh, herds. So you know, there there's the uh, the milking side, but there's also the feeding side where there's a ton of science into uh, making sure that you know animals have the right feed they need and can feed whenever they want. So there's also some cool uh, autonomous uh, robots for um, you know, making sure that, you know, it pushes the feed back closer to the animals so they have easier access and can eat whenever they want and helps with stress and helps with uh, the quality and health and that sort of thing too. Yeah. So if I had a cow, let's just say her name is Bessie, right? Because I think most cows, that's their name. All cows. Um, <laughs> so you, you would really have the ability to say she's, uh, she's away from the herd or would it get down to the point that Hey, Bessie needs to eat more food or something's going wrong with, with her digestion or something like that, where an individual cow says, we need to go out and deal with this or figure out what the problem is. Definitely. You know, temperature monitoring is uh, pretty important. Uh, so you can, you know, tell if, you know, they're, you know, if they have a fever or maybe they're getting ill and then you can also, you know, monitor um, milk production, of course, and um, make sure they're healthy that way. And then also monitor the feeding and say, um, you know, are they spending enough time eating and getting food when they need to? Or, you know, is some uh, higher animal in the pack blocking them out from getting the food they need? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do they, do they make those devices for humans because I need to put those on my children to make sure that they're <laughs> eating, functioning properly? Yeah, you know, so I had uh, my first kid about a year ago, and I have to say the amount of IoT for kids is <laughs> really kind of overwhelming. Like there's smart socks, there's a um, a baby camera, and you put your baby in this uh, you know special black and white gridded shirt, and uh, it tells you how well your baby is sleeping based on the image analysis. It, we don't have any of those, but it's a bit crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine. Just, you know, when you and I were growing up, hey, go to sleep, quit playing, eat your food. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing nowadays. Yeah. So um, you spoke a little bit about the technology in the field, right? The tractors, the equipment. We just spoke a little bit about, um, you know, animals and herd management. I know there's some technology kind of around the finished product of the grain, and um, you know what I would call maybe bin monitoring. Uh, I know you dabble a little bit in that, but uh, 
give us an example or something related to to that aspect of of monitoring yeah so i would i would expand that a little bit to talk about uh storage in general because okay. you know every crop needs to be stored somehow and the the common example i've come across uh is temperature whether you're storing milk and need to make sure it's cold or you're storing uh, hay and need to make sure it's not getting too hot so uh, in case you don't know uh, ra raising hay was one of the things we did on our farm and you know it's definitely um, you know, a uh, pretty important part of the ag industry uh, but if it gets too hot then it can spontaneously combust and uh, catch your barn on fire which is um, really quite a problem, of course. Right. So th there's a lot of things you can do in the uh, hay uh, growing and cutting and harvesting process to make sure the moisture level of that hay is low enough. It's not going to be a problem. But uh, in terms of IoT and ag tech, you can also uh, monitor the temperature of it, monitor the moisture of it, and that ensures that it's being stored properly. And if the temperature or moisture starts spiking, then you can go in there and do something about it. And I think that problem applies to hay, applies to grain, applies to potatoes and everything else that you, know, you wanna make sure it's being stored in the right conditions. Otherwise it's a quality problem for the farm and everyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so um, John, we've talked a little bit about you know the assets, and obviously uh, the equipment provides uh, information, so you can react and do something with it. But obviously, there's the the application, right, of of how that data is sent to you. And you know, I'm kind of thinking there's there's an app that a farmer could literally download on his phone, so that information is at their their fingertips. Maybe you could talk a little bit about you know the the apps that are out there that um, enable the farmer to respond accordingly. Yeah, and I've actually worked on some of those, so uh, I'm happy to talk about that. It, there's a lot of really cool stuff out there, I would say. It, and where the apps really make a difference, I think, is coming is to the timeliness of the decisions, and whether it's equipment decisions or watering decisions or herd health decisions, having the data available at your fingertips uh, makes it easier makes the decision cycle shorter. So before, you know, if you were suspicious of a problem, you would have to go out and investigate it and you would have to, you know, do a lot of legwork to say, yep, that's a problem and now here's how I'm going to fix it. And with the the data capabilities, you can now make that a lot faster. So instead of waiting weeks to analyze data or get results back from uh, sampling or testing, you can now get that data in a day, make a decision in a day. So that you know, leads to better uptime for equipment, better health for herds and animals. And I think that makes a really big difference. Uh, one of the customer quotes I've gotten recently is, the great thing about remote monitoring is being able to tell yourself things, what you need to know without having to tell everyone. And there's a lot of uh, different needs on the farm or out in the industrial worlds that we serve that, you know, there's a lot of different roles there that make it better, make it so that remote monitoring is really nice to say, okay, here's the data I need for what my job is, but someone else can get the data they need for what their job is. Right. Yeah, that's great. Well, we're talking today with John Stratton. He's with uh, Freewave Technologies. He's the product line manager specifically in the in, in the ag space. And I want to thank you again for joining us today. Um, obviously, Freewave has a lot of other verticals out there and, and, you know, data and data analytics applies to everything we do every day. Um, we've talked a little bit about the agriculture aspect of it, but maybe you want to talk a little bit about some other verticals that FreeWave is involved with, and maybe one or two examples of uh, how edge asset management may be involved and, and some benefits. Yeah. Yeah. So we also work uh, a lot in the oil and gas industry. Uh, certainly remote is a common theme for everything we do. Uh, the other, the other one being um, water and wastewater utilities is one we're doing some work in. And our products are really uh, remote and rugged is uh, our history and what we're expanding on. 
So we can uh, provide connectivity, you know, across, you know, 20 or 60 miles, depending on how good your line of sight is. And, you know, whether you have uh, operations in really cold places like Antarctica or really hot places like uh, Texas, you know, we've got uh, products that work there. And in terms of examples, um, the the being able to uh, provide connectivity remotely or provide uh, data remotely is uh, pretty powerful. And, and we've got um, the pivot irrig irrigation example I talked about earlier, but also uh, lots of remote well pads that are powered by uh, fr free wave products and helping uh, get the data back to wherever it needs to go. Awesome. So uh, we've talked about, you know, kind of where we are in the here and the now. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the, the broadcast, I was amazed at how much tech goes into uh, to, uh, to the, the uh, farming and ag industry. You know, it's almost like a farmer can kick his feet up on the porch, you know, enjoy a, a glass of iced tea and, and run the show from, from there. But obviously that's the here and the now. Um, Talk, you know, let's fast forward um, five years out, you know, um, are things just going to continue to expand and that, and that line is just going to go exponential or is there enough technology out there where really the focus is going to be about enhancing and making things more efficient? So give us a perspective of what, what we have to look forward to and whether it's in agriculture specifically or whether there's some other applications that FreeWave does that could give an example. I think one of the interesting things about farming is that, uh, the core technology of harvesting, uh, you know, has always been evolving. You know, if you go back to uh, when, you know, mechanized equipment first came out, you know, that, that core technology of, you know, cutting the crop off at ground level and then, you know, separating uh, grains from the chaff, there's, there's always been evolutions in uh, how that happens. And you know that part uh, you know keeps evolving, keeps changing. I think where technology can really help is in how everything relates to other parts of the operation. Uh, you can um, make it more efficient, more productive, more profitable. But the analytics is really going to help relate uh, one part of the operation to another, and make it so you can be more profitable across the whole enterprise. So I think you know, that, that's pretty interesting. And certainly the uh, recent uh, explosion of cloud-based services had, has made a big difference there in terms of the analysis capabilities. In terms of where we're going, especially with connectivity, which is where uh, FreeWave has a strong foundation, a lot of the products out there today rely on one type of connectivity. And I think especially with uh, new types of cellular coming out with a uh, new, um, you know, not necessarily new, but diff different um, radio options, th there's an opportunity for hybrid connectivity with, you know, in certain cases, you know, you'll use certain technology for certain data. And in certain cases, you'll use, you know, a, you know, a different technology for your longer range, more important data to make sure your operation's running well. So you're not relying on a, a single good and fast pipe to the internet all the time. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's specific to the connectivity part. I, I think the analytics part is where things get really interested, interesting and being able to shorten the decision cycle and make that automatic so that it's, uh, instead of relying on analytics in the cloud and people taking action manually, you're relying on analytics happening, you know, right at that asset, whether it's a uh, tractor or irrigation or cow or um, well pad operation. Yeah. And then t making the decisions right there with automation, with analysis, you know, with software happening right there. I think that'll be a good evolution for, you know, the things we work on. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So what you're saying is there'll be uh, cows and robots in, in the field taking care of it, but uh, no, it, it makes 
total sense. So right now there's some amazing technology that says, hey, here's what's going on. You need to react. But what you're basically saying is, hey, here's what's going on. We'll go ahead and take care of the adjustment for you. The, the, the technology and the end asset will, will take care of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would also emphasize that the configurability of that is pretty important because there's so many different uh, operations out there, you know, even within farming, you know, every farm is a little different. So from an industry perspective, I want to make, make sure that we're uh, giving farmers the control over what's happening. It's not, you know, a robot taking over. It's <laughs> a robot doing what you tell it to do, which I think can help out a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it sounds like things have come quite a long way from, uh, from being a hay farmer and, rural Pennsylvania. Uh, yes. Yeah. There, there's uh, a lot of differences out there and it's you know, been really cool to work on some of the things that make a difference. So yeah, definitely yeah. something I uh, am excited to keep working on. Yeah. Well, it certainly sounds like free wave technologies is uh, on the, the cutting edge of that. So John, I can't thank you enough for, for uh, joining us today. It's always been great to learn about I truly, I had no idea there was so much technology around, around farming and agriculture and herd management. So it's really interesting to learn about it and, um, and how people are out there really taking it to the next level. So again, thank you for joining us today, John. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, really appreciated talking to you. Dan. All right, that's great. And I'd like to thank our audience for joining us today on Uptime Logistics. Obviously, it's powered by Cap Logistics, and you can find more information about the show in the description below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, reach out to caplogistics.com for all of your transportation needs. Again, thanks for joining us today.